Hello and welcome to this section of Calculus Extra Practice with Integration. Now in this section we're going to learn a technique of integrating to find the volume of a solid object and it's called the washer method. So in the previous section we did what we called the disk method. Here we're learning what we call the washer method. And I promise you I spent some extra time teaching you what the disk method was in the last section because if you really understand that then the washer method is very simple to understand. So just to recap for the disk method, it's called the disk method because you take a function, just imagine a function hovering above you know, an x-axis here, and you revolve it like a barbecue rotisserie you know, around the x-axis. And if you do that, you're always going to get a three-dimensional shape that will look like a tube. Now, if, if, if the function is shaped weird, it'll look like a vase or some kind of nice hourglass figure, but it'll always have a cross-section if you slice it you know, along, uh, you know, along a cross section, if you slice it that way, it'll always look circular. And that's how we set up our integrals, taking advantage of that fact. Now the washer method uh, is named that way because the washer method is used if you have two functions, let's call one of them f of x and one of them g of x, and you revolve both of them around the x-axis. And so you're not trying to find the volume of the whole region, you're trying to find the volume encapsulated between the two functions that you rotate around. So a picture is worth a thousand words, so I think let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll draw a quick picture to kind of explain where we're coming from. So here's X, and for lack of a better word, we'll call that Y. So let's draw ourselves uh, really two different functions. The first one, we'll call it, let's do, you know, we'll call this F of X, all right? And then the second function, we'll choose like a different color. The second function, we'll call it, let's say, something like that, we'll call that G of X. All right, now what we're trying to do with the washer method, you really only use it when you have two functions and you're revolving both of them around the x-axis. So what do you think is going to happen if you do that? And then you're going to basically have a situation where you revolve both of them around the axis. So what's going to happen then, let's start with this one. Then for the blue curve, it'll look something like this after you revolve it. You'll have like a, like a little circular region there, a little circular region there, let's say. And then for the purple curve, it will look something kind of like this. So it'll go out and then in and then out again. And then this guy is going to be something like this, right? And then this guy is going to look something like, like this, okay? So what you're going to have, and I'll just kind of put this in front like that. If you can imagine it, if you have two curves and you revolve them around the x-axis, then you've created a, a, a solid figure with a hollow middle, basically, is what you're doing here. So f of x defines the boundary of the outside outer diameter, and g of x defines the boundary of the inner diameter. And between the two is a solid block of wood or whatever you want to think about that's revolved in three dimensions. So when you have two functions, any two functions, and you revolve them around both of them, around the x-axis, and you're trying to find the volume that lies between the object defined by both of those curves revolved around, then by definition, every single time that happens, you could look through the middle and see right down the middle because the center is always hollow. But still, even though the center is hollow, if I slice uh, here, then what I'm going to have is an outer diameter that makes a circle and an inner diameter that makes a circle. And if I slice here, I'm going to have an outer diameter that makes a different size circle and an inner diameter that makes a different size circle, right? But the middle is always going to be hollow. So how